Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 3022, and this is the overview video summary of the 17th lecture, which is about reflexive and critical thinking. So the idea in this lecture is to reinforce some of our uh, prior learning in terms of thinking about how we can, can you know, what the academic process is in terms of thinking through uh, how we're going to anticipate the report which you're producing for coursework D, which is worth 50% of the coursework activity on this module. So the idea is, is what we're going to explore, so I'm just trying to get out of the sunlight, it's lovely, but it's, uh, it, it's blinding as well, um, is to think through what the critical skills are that we need, the thinking skills are that we need in order to be able to interrogate a situation successfully and to be able to anticipate what the future problems that are, are, are arising that we need to tackle and deal with. One of the ways to think about this is, <clears throat> well, first of all, the this is this is forms three. There's three modules, uh, three lectures that I'm going to do for this, which are, I, I was planning to do these after Easter, but I'm going to bring them forward. So it gives you, it'll be very useful for your technology projects as well. Uh, it brings forward the. Um, uh, these lectures to be before Christmas, before Easter, not Christmas, uh, so that we can talk about uh, the, the process of uh, anticipating the project report at the end of the module. Uh, so it just gives us a bit more time. And it's about thinking about, you know, having the critical thinking skills that you will be able to apply and use in the future. So it's like it'd be like a framework of examination, a methodology of examination, which 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 enables you to apply your learning in different circumstances. So if you only ever work uh, in a way which is about being told which buttons to press and what to do, what you can't do when you you, know, you might have great skills, but are you adaptable? And there's an interesting uh, uh, the, there was an article I shared on DMU Talk this morning, which is about the idea of different levels of or different types of uh, intelligence quotient. So there's the IQ, you know, which kind of you know how do you do, how logical are you, if you like, and then there's the emotional uh, quotient, which is how do you respond because you can be the most logical person in the world, but uh, if you can't relate to people and to pass on your ideas, then it's it's locked in isolation, if you like, and it's fairly useless. Uh, but then the other uh, uh, quotient which is being used now is adaptability. So an adaptability quotient. So how are you able to adapt and change your ideas? Now, underpinning this approach, the critical thinking approach, is the idea that, yes, you can learn by imitation. You can learn by being told what to do and you can learn to press the buttons very effectively. If you learn by discovery and exploration, what difference does that make? And I would suggest that what it makes is that when it comes, you might arrive at the same point with somebody who's learned by Im in, in imitation and that you might have the same range of skills and your journey might have been harder to achieve those skills and you probably sit there and think well it would have just been easier to just copy what somebody else was doing but when things change and when things you know as, as everything does and when circumstances change and social situations change and technology changes can you adapt now the person who's learned to think for themselves can adapt the person who's learned by imitation and by doing what they're told finds it much more difficult to adapt and they need to find a new role model who could, they can adapt to. And then, you know, we, we're not dealing with the problems of the future. And that's really what the academic process is about, is how do we anticipate not what the, not problem solving, that's very important, but problem posing. What are the questions that we need to raise for the future and how do we meet the challenges of the future? So we'll look at this in terms of the kind of the, 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 the structure, if you like, the tools, the cognitive tools, the mental tools that we have for thinking ideas through and developing evidence and developing a thought process. So typically with a kind of critical thinking model, it's kind of how do you, uh, uh, how do you analyze a, a, a situation? How do you produce an explanation of what's a plausible explanation of what's happening? What are the inferences that you can draw from the evidence that you've gathered that can support this? What's the evaluation that you make out of this? So what are the choices that you have to you know, kind of consider in terms of alternative patterns of uh, uh, behavior going forward? You know, what's your level of interpretation that this is based on? And how do you do this in a way where you are 
uh, you know, it's kind of self-motivated, if you like, self-regulated, that you're asking the questions that you are interested in, not just asking questions which are, if you like, predetermined or pre-cooked, uh, to use our processed media model uh, of ideas. So there's a kind of you know, steps that we can look at, in, which take us through the kind of the, the model of critical thinking, which is about thinking about thinking tools, and uh, thinking about you know, what it is that we need in order to do uh, make, make this a practical process, something which we can apply in different circumstances, and that we can draw on in order to be able to um, give a sense of um, engagement with problems which haven't been posed yet uh, because we can relate it to other things and we can look at other things in different circumstances and we can bring them together and synthesize those ideas together in a new body and pattern of knowledge so we're really thinking about how you know what skills do we need to pass this these thinking skills on uh, one of the ways to think about this is um, how will we educate the, 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 the uh, leaders of tomorrow. Now you're about to make the step into uh, into employment. You know, finally getting get, get, getting out of education. Though some of you might decide to carry on um, for a little while longer. Uh, but in ten years' time, when you're working in an organisation or a company, you've set your own business up, or you're you know you're you're working in the teaching profession or something else, and you're starting to work at the level where you're writing. Uh, post job posts and you're employing people to come in and do a particular job so if you think about this, this is quite complex this is quite really amazing to think about because it's kind of where the privilege of uh, the, the this thinking process really fits in is okay in 10 years time so what do we need to be teaching the teachers of tomorrow what do they need to know now in order for you to be able, so that their students and the future graduates are able to do the job that you want them to do 10 years in the future. Now, there we go. That's a mind bending concept to get your head around. You know, what is it that you would be teaching somebody so that they're ready and relevant for the world that is going to be coming in 10 years time, if not further. And that's what the academic process is about. It's about questioning and it's about in, in examination, and it's about that idea of separating cause from effect. So we see something in society, and we make an assumption that you know, kind of processed food is there because it's about exploitation. Well, it might not be. You know, x plus y equals z is not always the appropriate way to examine a social situation. What we might be better doing is saying, okay, well, what do we mean by x? What do we mean by plus, what do we mean by Z, what do we mean by equals, what do we mean by you know, any, any different combination of them, and is it an automatic process that one means you know, links to the other? Um, the academic process is really just kind of uh, uh, challenging some of those assumptions and working out ways to ask those questions in a kind of productive and plausible way. Right, the notes for this are up and available on the DMU Commons wiki. Just go to wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk and look for the Tech 3022 section and you'll be able to download them uh, from there. If you want to carry on the conversation and the discussion, if you've got any examples that you think are really useful, go to talk.our.dmu.ac.uk and don't forget that the uh, you can use the discourse platform on your phone as well as on a website. Just go to the Apple or the Android app stores and you should be able to, I think it's free on, on the mode, you don't have to pay anything for it, and you should be able to link uh, to talk.our.dmu.ac.uk. I'll see you at the lecture.